who were bothering you. Okay. If you, um, if you talk to any phone that's been in the military, mm -hmm. especially female, if you don't go with the program, they can make leaders or your peers can make it difficult, make life difficult for you. And most people, men, young people in the military are, are doing what they have to do to get by. So they have to be doing what the crowd is doing so that they don't get chastised. Okay, now, if you go against um, a tradition or if you go against, you know, if there are people in the military that, you know, don't exactly agree with the methods that they use, but that's the military, that's, that's, how it, that's how it is there. But if you go against that grain, you are out of the loop and subject to be chastised. So young people are going to come into the military and play that game so they can get by without, without aggravating so-called the powers that be. And that's how a lot of them were around me. They knew this was going on. They knew the things that they were saying weren't true. But in order to stay out of um, uh, the loop of being chastised, they will go along with the program. And a lot of them do. Just to stay safe, just to stay in the safe zone. And they know that it's wrong. Um, the way they felt about their country, I know I still, even after everything that I went through, I'm glad I did my time, I'm glad I served. But I can't speak for, um, for them how they felt, but I did have some people that warned me about what was going on. That's what I'm wondering. They, we all know that the United States soldiers are fabulous, you know, and I honor them, but these part, this, part, this particular group that was bothering you, what is it with them? What, what do you think it was with them that they wanted to go after you? This particular group, because you did say there were soldiers after you and your commanding officer. What do you think it was about you that they just wanted to come after for some reason? Um, I was, I, like, like I mentioned before, I was an older soldier. Mm -hmm. um, I was 33 when I came in. I knew pretty much about life and how things worked. And I was living with 18, 19 year olds. You know, I had an 18 year old, you know, sergeant in charge of me. So, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't with the crowd. I did my job, and I, and I, I, I took care of my soldiers, and that was it. There was no interaction as far as the things that, the negative things that go on in the military. It's something that I didn't want any part of. Now, when I think negative things. There's always something in every organization that's, you know, it's, it's like high school. There's cliques here, you know, there's a gang over here. And if you're not part of something and that they see you standing on your own and, and, and still making it, I think that that sends an example to the young people that, hey, she's doing the right thing. And she's still standing on her own two feet. They don't want that. They want young people so they can mold them into their way of thinking. I already had my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. I already knew how things were. Mm -hmm. I already knew um, the, the games that they play for young people, you know, to try and get them to come to their side. The process is called being broken. Mm -hmm. And it can break a lot of young people because they don't have their own mind yet. They're still young. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I was told I need to be broken to the way, to the way they do things, to, to the negative side. I have no problem being broken and disciplined is very good and Elsa is really good about that. But there are areas where you need to use your own head, make your own decisions. And if they see a person doing that and still able to gain respect from their peers and young people are looking at that person as, hey, well she's not doing it, why should I do it? You're you're like a I wanna say not like a role model, but more like someone who has morals and are standing by them and are not going to compromise them just to fit in. And once the higher chain of command or the people that want them to be molded in a different way see that they're admiring that person, they'll try to break them down. Okay. When you left Iran, did you go to Germany after that? Um, yes. That was, I originally went to Germany and then um, during my tour um, that whole year in Iraq, we did return back to Germany, and then that was the end of my tour there after I finished a few months 
there, I finished up and went to my next duty station. Well, when you were in Germany, what happened? You had several threats of rape at that point? Well, no, the rape came in with the last, um, the comments of rape came with the last duty station. Let me just explain what happened in Germany and um, why things escalated from there. Like I said, my roommate had left, so the perps didn't have any other way to monitor where I was going. So what they did was they set up night cameras and spy cameras on the back of the barracks. I pointed to my window. And I saw this. You know, I, I saw the camera outside. I, I, I saw the camera pointing directly to my window. I was so livid. I was so livid. I didn't know what to do other than the fact that cause I know how I, you know, am in my room, you know, very private, you know, sometimes I walk on the towel, you know, whatever. Um, so I was very upset that, you know, my privacy had been invaded. And it kept going even if I, after I called them to use the first time. So the second time I was like, I'm not going to stop this. So I wrote a letter to the battalion commander explaining what was going on. And within two hours of me writing that letter, I was sitting in his office. And when you go to see the battalion commander, you are not to be in that room without a chain of command for yourself. Um, an NCO with you. I was in that room with the Lieutenant Colonel, Captain, and a Lieutenant. I had no representation, just myself. Is that typical so, in the Army, no representation? You have to be with someone. If you're going to see a Colonel, you have to be with someone of higher ranking than yourself. I was in that room with just myself. Okay. And he was obviously upset with uh, the letter. Um, he said, yes, yeah, he told me, who did, who did I think I was? I said, I'm not trying to throw trouble, but there are five cameras outside my window. I mean, I'm sure you don't know about that. You now, at the time, I was ignorant to what was going on. I didn't know I was being gang stuff. So I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, these, you know, these kids are just praying these pranks, you know. They don't know that they're violating my rights, you know. Like, you don't want my civil rights at that point, my human rights. So when I had put that in the letter. And I explained to him what was going on, and the only thing, the, the only thing that he said to me was, do you think that you offended someone? And I'm thinking, I have the, my, my captain there from Iraq, and I have a lieutenant there, and the time commander sitting in front of me asking me this question, I said, well, if I did offend someone, we're all adults, can we talk about it? Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And, um, I'm sorry, hold on a second. Okay, um, all right, okay. Um, I wasn't sure if I had offended someone. If I did, can we talk about it now? They quickly changed the subject. Quickly changed the subject. And a... I told, he asked me how, I told him about the monitoring of the cameras and about the TV, how it, it flickers and how I, I thought that people were watching me through that. And um, he asked me, how, how do you think that's happening? I explained to him. And I explained the cameras once again. He said, well, you know what? We are looking into getting cameras um, put into every exit. I said, well, do you have them now? And he said, no, we, we ran out of money, but we're, we're planning on getting that. And I said, well, these people have night vision cameras hooked up to the back of the bed. So let's pull them straight to my window. And he said, well, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. And we'll, you know, they called the MPs. And that particular MP, that officer that um, they called, was the one that always came every time there was an altercation with me. So he... They decided to keep, this is how they keep it in-house, they keep one person involved, and as time went on through my um, my last days there, I figured out he was just part of the whole gang stalking, um, organized, you know, and he was part of the whole thing. Um, but after I wrote that letter, it, the, the voice, the skull, intensified like times ten, it's ridiculous. 
When you had a heartache, the voice of the skull, what were they saying to you? You were 